Is coverage customizer tool? So you only pay for what you need. Sorry? Lemo, you're an animal! Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. In this ad, pay attention to the actor's gums. Gums? We don't think about them. But like skin, over time, gums can get damaged. Colgate Gum Renewal. Reverses early gum damage for a beautiful, revitalized smile. First time in 43 years. I know, right? Does Emilio Estefan come to the set that day? Oh, hell no. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, find out what that's all about tomorrow. My very fun exclusive with the Estefans at the Red Table. Thank you so much to the Academy yeah. Museum of Motion Pictures for having us here today. This place is incredible. You will have to come. I'll try and get you tickets to see if we can oh, get you see. in. <laughs> this place opens up September 30th. It's worth it. Go to the Academy's website or mobile app for more info on tickets. Yeah, and we're going to leave you now with more from our Nick Cannon exclusive. Mm. So good this mm -hmm. interview was. His talk show debuted today. And Happening now. CPS Energy likely headed toward a double-digit rate hike. We'll tell you why and when it could hit your bill. Trying to avoid buying a new car right now and just want to keep your old one running? Proper maintenance is key. Coming up, when you should go to the pros and when you might, do it yourself. And rain chances are looking rather encouraging later this week. I'm going to focus on that, and I'll be back in a bit to tell you more and time it out. The News at 5 starts right now. First at 5, CBS Energy trying to make a case for double-digit rate increases. The president and CEO Paula Gold Williams says the utility is not formally recommending an increase at this point but it's in what it considers a pre-rate increase consideration period. Garrett Berger tells us more about why CPS Energy says they need it and when the hike could happen. We are not declaring a rate increase today. Despite CEO Paula Gold Williams clarification, it's clear that CPS Energy is almost certainly heading for its first rate increase in about eight years. Right now, it's focusing on laying out the justification for what it currently expects to be a 10% hike. The $1 billion in gas and energy bills the utility faces from the February freeze are unsurprisingly part of the reasoning. We're still fighting everything we can to get that money down. The utility CFO, though, says the lion's share of the rate increase would be for core operations, with plan investments in reliability and resiliency, among others. The freeze costs are only part of it even assuming they can't knock any of that bill down. If we're allowed to spread out over time, uh, I think the impact is anywhere from, you know, from, I think we showed one and a half to, to 3% of the total bill impact back in our May presentation. And that's probably still an appropriate range uh, of what that full 10% would make up. Talk of a rate increase comes as the utility has resumed disconnections after having suspended them since March 2020. The utility started this month with large commercial accounts, but some residential shutoffs will resume in October. The resumption of disconnects drew protesters outside CPS headquarters today. 72,000 people are facing disconnections. That's just households. Um, we, we definitely come from a stance where we believe that um, the right to electricity and water is human right. Gold Williams says a rate increase probably would not appear on your bill until early spring. But the CPS board and the San Antonio City Council would have to approve it first. Against the backdrop of all these financial considerations, CPS trustees are also scheduled to discuss today whether or not it's still the best idea to give away three and a half acres of prime downtown real estate. The San Antonio Museum of Art is next to a surplus CPS property. The utility had agreed back in 2015 to give it a portion of that property, but they didn't end up following through on the deal, missing a 2019 deadline. Now, with a rate increase on the horizon and all those people facing disconnections, they're going to have to discuss if that's still the best path forward. Live downtown, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. A man who was stabbed to death on Friday has been identified. He is 50-year-old Roy Salinas Jr. According to San Antonio Police, he was found with several stab wounds on Friday night in the 1100 block of Enrique Barrera Parkway. He was unresponsive when paramedics arrived and taken to the hospital. That's where he was pronounced dead. No one has been arrested. The case is still being investigated. And do you recognize this man? San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers trying to track him down. He's accused of robbing the Macy's at Ingram Park Mall earlier this month. They say on September 14th, he went into the store, grabbed some items and threatened an employee before he ran off. Anyone with information is being asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP.
Republican state lawmakers releasing their first draft of what they hope is Texas new congressional map. The proposal includes two new districts in Austin and Houston. Here's a look at that draft. The state's current congressional delegation has 36 seats, 23 Republican, 13 are Democrats. The new congressional map would give Texas 38 seats and 40 electoral votes in future presidential elections. However, it's only the first draft will likely be challenged and changed before it's passed by the state legislature and signed into law. You can read more about the proposal right now on KSAT.com. He is about to become the first Latino superintendent of Chicago Public Schools. But the honor means that Pedro Martinez is leaving the San Antonio Independent School District in the process. He has spent seven years as superintendent here at SAISD. Today, his last day on the job, he sat down with our Jesse Degollado to share his hopes for the district and its students and the biggest challenge still ahead. I'm sad. Uh, but at the same time, I also know that the work is going to continue beyond me. He won't be around to see the work completed on the district's new and renovated schools. But academically, he says the San Antonio Independent School District is stronger than it's ever been. Our college uh, attendance rate will be the highest we've seen. The old familiar Burbank High School and the new Burbank High School under construction, Martinez says, are in a sense physical reminders of just how far SAISD has come. Martinez remembers when he first came. We had a different attitude about our children. We saw their poverty, we saw their challenges as deficits, and we, we acted as such. Until, he says, teachers and school leaders saw what he did. That even though they're low income, their potential is amazing. They have the, the most amazing attitudes, their work ethic is there, and they just want a chance, they want an opportunity. That is, he says, until the pandemic halted much of their progress. You know, I do wonder quite a bit about what will be the long-term ramifications of COVID and how do we make sure that our children don't fall through the cracks. Martinez says the district has a plan to help overcome those deficits while still trying to keep its students and teachers safe in the classroom with masks for its students and vaccines for teachers and staff. It was never about having a political fight. Triggered by a powerful and outspoken governor in a lawsuit. My fear is that it will go to the Supreme Court. We could have an injunction. Until then, Martinez says the district won't step down and he's more than willing to come back to testify. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. You're coming up at 6, the outgoing SAISD superintendent talks about his hopes for the district's future and its students. Well, the humidity is back as we were expecting it and we're feeling it outside today. We started the day at 65. Long gone are our mornings in the 50s, at least for now. And we topped out at 91 degrees for the high temperature with the average being 88. Looking at the readings now in folks' backyards, Leon Springs 85, 96 now in Del Rio, Floresville at 91. And for the most part, we're right around that 90 degree mark. Seguin, Universal City 90, Windcrest meanwhile 87. This evening pretty quiet, partly cloudy. You'll notice the mugginess and a light southeasterly breeze at 5 to 10. We'll be in the 80s for most of the evening, then by midnight dropping down into the 70s. Promising and encouraging rain chances for portions of the week. We're going to talk more about that and how much rain could fall and help you time it out coming up, Steve. Thank you, Adam. As many Americans wait to get their third dose of the COVID vaccine, some teachers and healthcare workers in New York City are fighting against being forced to get their first. And again, more protests against vaccine mandates being held in the city. ABC's Dan Lieberman with what some New Yorkers have to say about the mandate about to take effect this week. We will not comply! Healthcare workers and teachers. Stop! Protesting vaccine mandates set to go into effect this week in New York City. For state health care workers, the deadline to get vaccinated is today, and officials are preparing for mass firings and staff shortages. Still, some health care workers are vowing to stay on. I'm, I'm going to stand my ground. I'm still going to continue to go to work until they actually tell me you cannot be here anymore. You need to leave. Teachers on Staten Island, one of the places most in danger of losing staff to the mandate, await a federal court of appeals hearing set for Wednesday, with the mandate temporarily on hold for now. We stood for your children. We taught your children during a pandemic. We went remote. We went digital. We did everything asked for us. Now we need your support more than ever because we don't want to lose our jobs over this. Some 70 million eligible Americans remain unvaccinated. 
as the CDC recommends booster shots for vulnerable Americans, including seniors, high-risk workers, and the immunocompromised. Just Pfizer recipients are eligible for now, but the CDC director telling others not to worry. We haven't forgotten you. If you've gotten Moderna and J&J, &J, we will, with similar urgency, address um, boosters for those populations, as well as um, looking at the science and data for mix and matching. And earlier today, President Biden getting his third shot. The FDA, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, looked at all the data, uh, completed their review, and determined the boosters for the Pfizer vaccine are safe and effective. For children ages 5 to 11, Pfizer is expected to submit data for regulatory review in the coming days, with authorization expected as early as the end of October. The dose will be about a third of what adults get. Dan Lieberman, ABC News, New York. It appears the ripple effects of the pandemic continue to impact via the transit agency dealing with staffing shortages. Our Samuel King joins us now. So Samuel, VIA is being forced to make some service changes now? Yes, Steve and Ursula, the biggest impact will be a change in frequency on half of VIA's routes. Uh, passengers will have to wait a little longer between buses. The agency making the changes to make sure service stays reliable. The normal turnover of drivers was made worse during the pandemic because of a hiring freeze, and the union says dozens of operators are out right now because of COVID. Coming up at 6, why V officials are optimistic that the changes will be temporary. Taking a look at one big issue in traffic this evening, and that's going to be I-35 downtown here. This is a 35 at Laredo. There's a crash there, and that is causing some delays, and we'll have more on that throughout the evening. This week, I joined forces with the KSAT Explains team for a brand new episode that's out tomorrow evening. This episode all about highways. There are at least two major highway expansion projects planned in our area to help ease growing traffic congestion. One project targets Loop 1604, the other I-35 heading northeast. But even though these projects are designed to create more roadway for drivers and ease congestion, not everyone is convinced they'll be effective. Some even believe they could cause more harm than good. KZAT explains what's driving highways will be available to stream tomorrow at 7 on KSAT.com, the KSAT TV app, and our Facebook page. And if you can't watch it live, we'll post a full episode so you can watch on demand later Tuesday evening. Steve, Ursula. Thank you, Samuel. The cost of new vehicles is up, and it's high enough to make people hang on to their current set of wheels. So if your car needs a repair, where do you turn? Depends on what it is. We're going to steer you in the right direction coming up next. New at five, curbing the cost of car repairs. With new and used car prices still surging, more and more people are trying to keep their current wheels running longer. But who should you trust? The dealer, an independent mechanic, or yourself? To your side's Marilyn Moore. It's on when to DIY and when to go to the pros. When it comes to keeping his classic car beautiful and road ready, Ian Carr says it's all about maintenance. Classic cars are like classic people. <laughs> the older we get, the more maintenance we need. Of course, even modern cars need proper maintenance and the occasional repair. But where should you take it? Consumer Reports says that depends on the job. If your vehicle is still under warranty, experts say always take it to the dealer for a covered repair. Dealers tend to have the most up-to-date tools and training for that car. You should always bring your car to the dealer for recall work and any issues with the safety systems, including airbags and seatbelts. This is because of the ever-increasing complexity of the hardware and software he also recommends the dealer for anything to do with the infotainment system. But for less complex repairs like brakes, suspension, spark plugs, and even an alternator, you can save money by going to an independent mechanic. They usually have lower labor rates and can keep costs down by using aftermarket parts. If you're willing to roll up your sleeves, you can always take care of some of the simplest repairs DIY. Do it yourself. Things like changing out air filters, wiper blades, and even headlights. With a car, it's basically you got it right or you didn't. The headlight goes on or it doesn't go on. How many things in life are that black and white? And you get the bonus of saving money at the same time. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 
A reminder, September is Hunger Action Month, and there's still time to support your community. Our KSAC community partners collecting food donations and more through the end of the month. You can drop off donations at RBFCU locations across San Antonio. Here are some of the most needed items. They are rice, beans, diapers, pet food, cereal, and other non-perishables. If you'd like to donate, we have all of this information on KSAT.com. Let's take a live look outside with live cam sky 12 this afternoon. Beautiful weekend. Pretty nice Monday too. Not a bad Monday. It's a little humid outside, but uh, yeah, whatever. It's, We're not, used it's to it. not almost 100. Well, we were spoiled last week though, with the lack That's of humidity, true. so I'm just being a little greedy. However, we could use some rain around here. We do have some promising rain chances to talk about basically moments of rain throughout the week or periods of rain and the humidity. It remains in place, so let's get right to it. Taking a look at our radar, we have a few showers trying to work their way toward the Rio Grande, and that's where we could have a few light showers through the night and maybe even early tomorrow. But by and large, we're looking at dry conditions this evening, tonight, and most of the day tomorrow. Here's the big picture, and you look at the big swirl over New Mexico. That's our next disturbance. That's an upper level disturbance that's close enough to us to really help kickstart our next good round of showers and thunderstorms, which would be tomorrow evening and especially tomorrow night. And this isn't the only upper level disturbance. We'll have another one right on its heels for later on this week. So let's talk about it first of all. Again, generally dry tonight and to start the day tomorrow. We'll have some low clouds in place when you wake up tomorrow. It'll look like it could rain, but mainly just cloudy. Once we get into the afternoon, one or two pop up showers possible, but not looking all that likely. It's tomorrow evening and especially tomorrow night. We shift our focus to the west, closer to the Rio Grande, expecting a burst of upper level energy. Notice six o'clock, some development out west. And that should then come together a bit, maybe even organize as it heads towards San Antonio throughout the evening and night. Again, that's tomorrow. Most of the day looking dry. Our first round of showers and thunderstorms, some of which could be heavy. We could have some pockets of heavy rainfall will be coming tomorrow night. So this is there's a lot on this graphic here. OK, but these are our rain chances for both during the daylight hours and during the nighttime hours. So tomorrow, a 30 percent chance during the day. You look at tomorrow night up to 60 percent Wednesday, a 40 percent chance in the afternoon, and then we get on into Thursday, especially Thursday night, Friday to start the weekend as well. And we see some more enhanced rain chances. Best thing you can do, download the KSAT Weather Authority app and you don't need to worry about it. We will keep you updated, especially if you enable the notifications. We'll keep you posted as things develop and even come live on air here from the studio right to the palm of your hand. So as for rainfall potential, of course, there's going to be a wide range of accumulations out there. But in general, what we're looking at here through Saturday evening is a pretty good swath across our area of several inches of rain, even the potential of between five to seven inches in a few pockets that happen to get numerous heavy downpours. But that's spread out over a several day span doesn't mean we're out of the woods for flash flooding. There is that potential, especially later in the week. But all in all, it looks like a good boost for the aquifer and even our drying conditions. Not quite drought, but drying conditions get a little crusty out there on the grass. All right, temperatures right now. Let's talk temps near 90 degrees at the moment. Pleasanton 93. New Braunfels 91. Uh, Catula is an outlier and an exception now at 99 in Del Rio 96 and locally we're mostly right around 90. 88 Converse, 89 in Rio Medina and Bernie area at about 84. So tomorrow we start the day low 70s. Of course, we'll have the noticeable humidity by the afternoon. We'll make it into the lower 90s, so 92 for a high. It's going to feel just like today. And then after dark, those rain chances really start to spike. So if you work outdoors during the day, Odds are in your favor, you'll be dry and fine to get your work done. It's tomorrow night when we're expecting the showers and thunderstorms to become more widespread. Same goes for Thursday night through Friday and Saturday. I think that's when we could pick up some of the highest rainfall totals of this week. But there will be those moments, those periods of rain. I know there's a lot to look at there. Bottom line temperatures drop closer to 80 for highs Friday and Saturday. <laughs> Again, KSAT Weather Authority app will keep you on top of it. That's the easiest thing to do here. Boy, our yards are going to love this. Thank you. All right. I read some quotes 
from media day today. <laughs> and, Greg, it seems like Greg Popovich loved his time with the media, which is rare. Yes. Today was Pop's rare form day okay. when it comes to his relationship with the media. When we come back, one of his targets was Manu Ginobili and his return to the Spurs. We'll talk about that. And the Cowboys say they're up for the challenge on Monday Night Football against the Eagles coming up. His wife needed him gone. <laughs> and we like Monty a lot better than him, so we listen to her. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich and why they brought back Manu to the silver and black in big board sports. Pop was in rare form today as the Spurs opened the 2021 training camp with media day at their practice facility. Pop begins his 26th season as the head coach of the Silver and Black with as many as eight new players that were not on the roster last year, but one familiar faces back, four-time NBA champion Manu Ginobili in his new role as a special advisor to basketball operations. In fact, he was there today for the opening camp. Just exactly what will Manu be doing for the team? He's going to do everything. Uh, he's going to help Brian in management. He's going to help me with coaching. He's going to help the players with development. He's probably going to go scout some people. Uh, I think he's probably going to figure out a two-week trip to Italy to scout foreign players. <laughs> uh, I might go with him. Uh, but I'm being serious. I mean, he's going to do all those things and see where he feels comfortable. And uh, It's just great to have him in the program for all kinds of reasons. Uh, but mainly because we love the guy and He's Manu Ginobili, so who wouldn't want to have him around? He's Manu. Pop also announced today the team is 100% fully vaccinated. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys stage their home owner on Monday Night Football when they host the Philadelphia Eagles tonight. It's shaping up to be a battle of the quarterbacks. The Eagles' Jalen Hurts, who has completed 67% of his passes for 454 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. He's also the Eagles' leading rusher with 144 yards. For Dak Prescott, he's going up against a defense that's only allowed an average of 11.5 points per game, while Prescott has completed 76.5% of his passes for 640 yards, three touchdowns, but with two interceptions. At home, the Cowboys have owned the Eagles in their last three games by winning more than 17 points. That's huge. Um, excited just to get back, get back to AT&T. Obviously the greatest place to play and um, to do it with uh, uh, a full stadium. Uh, Cowboy fans going crazy, I'm sure. Monday night football, division opponent. Um, no better way really for, my, I guess, this team just to start the season off at home. Um, I'm excited for it. We've got to start off and get this first division win. Uh, this is great atmosphere to be able to do it in, and I'm excited for the challenge. That's a home opener, and kickoff is at 7.15. All right. Thank you, Greg. You got it. We'll be right back. All right, before I move on with this, I want to tell everybody right now, get your phone out and get your camera out and ready, okay? It's going to help you out on this next frame. We do have good rain chances this week, but they'll be coming in spurts at various times, first being tomorrow night and then again Thursday night, good odds Friday, Saturday as well. A lot to take in on the seven-day forecast. Just prepare for periods of rain and some heavy showers. Okay, you see that funny-looking box on the upper right-hand side? Point your camera at it from your smartphone. It'll take you to a link that makes it very easy to download our app. And the reason I'm doing this is because I truly believe the best way to get good information this week and to keep you up to date will be with our app and allowing notifications. We even go live right onto it. That'll help you out. I was going to download it, but I realize I already have it. Of course. <laughs> I hope you do. Yes. <laughs> we'll see you at six.